Do you want to win in property this year? Of course you want to win. So in the final part of our mini series, we're going to tell you exactly how you can win in property this year. We're in a really fortunate position that not only can we rely on our own experience to help you win this year, but also working with hundreds, if not thousands of investors and seeing what the very best of them do and have in common. And in this mini podcast, we're going to share some of those things with you. Okay, the first thing you can do to make sure you win at property this year is to focus on the long term, long term, long term, long term. If you let yourself get scared or distracted by all the noise, which there will be a lot of this year, you won't end up doing anything. Nobody knows what the future holds, but it doesn't look like 2023 is going to be a straightforward year. That's not a bad thing. When you have a year that's very clearly just going to be a good year, there are far fewer opportunities around. Everyone's a lot more enthusiastic about investing in property. The media is a lot more enthusiastic about property, but it's harder to actually do. When you have a year that's a bit confusing, a bit difficult, everyone's a bit unsure, there are better opportunities. The thing to remember is that unless you are following a very specific short-term strategy, like you're trying to flip a property, there is no point judging the return of your investment over one year. You're not going to hold the property for one year. You should be holding it for multiple years, a decade or more. So if you believe that the value of an investment that you make at the start of the year might be worth slightly less by the end of the year, there's a chance that will happen. Does that mean that you shouldn't do it? No, of course not. If it's the right investment for the next decade, you should make that investment when you can. It's easy to say and everyone will nod along when the point is being made, but it's very difficult in practice to just tune out everything that's going on. But the best way I found of doing that is to focus on the long term. If you take that view and stay relentlessly focused on the future and on your goals and what you want to achieve over time, what may or may not happen next week or next month suddenly feels a lot less important and it's easier to just get on with the job. Very much related to that is that property investment, although even we're guilty of saying it in the podcast, it's like a business. It really isn't. Your property investments are a long-term wealth strategy. And you use property to grow your wealth. But property is not there to generate your wealth in the short term. It is not the place that you make money to then put in to property. The vast majority of people who invest in property have created wealth elsewhere and then moved it into property. Although unfortunately on the internet, you hear about the opposite. How property can generate cash in the short term and be your property business. But that's not how it works. So you need to, from your own job, your side hustle, your own business, whatever it might be, to build up a pot to invest in and then move it over into property. Property is not the place where that money starts. It's where your money ends up and can maximize your growth over the long term. So remember that you use property to grow your wealth, but not generate your wealth. The next way to make sure you win at property this year is to take consistent action. Consistent action is what gets you to that end goal. I'm sure you know this from making New Year's resolutions in the past, but it's very common for people to get excited, take a lot of action, but then drop it. Then maybe halfway through the year go, oh yeah, I was meant to be doing this, and then take some action again. It's very hard to get results that way. It's far better if you take a smaller amount of consistent action. The best way to do that is to keep the goal in mind. We talked about this all the way back in part one. You need to have a compelling reason for doing this in the first place and keep that in mind because that will motivate you to take action. Then take that goal, break it down into tiny little chunks and just get a little bit done every week. I feel like we've said this about 54 times now, but it's with good reason. Your property really is a long-term game. You're not going to be able to go, oh yeah, I really want to do this with property and then have it done in a fortnight. That's not how it works. If you just make sure that every week you take the next tiny step towards your goal, it might not feel like you're doing that much, but in a year's time, you'll be astonished by how much you've achieved when you look back. And then when you look back in 10 years time, you'll be very glad that you started taking those consistent steps. Something that's made a huge difference to ourselves as property investors is understanding the economy. At a big picture level, you don't need to be an economist, but understanding the basics will give you so much confidence. Because rather than having the news tell you how you should feel about every announcement that's made that impacts the economy, you'll be able to take your own view and be able to make assessments by yourself, which is so much more powerful as a property investor. Now that might sound intimidating, because most of us weren't taught economics at school. But the great news is it's actually more accessible than you realise. For a start, on the Property Podcast, 
We talk about the economy a lot. We also do the same on our YouTube channel. And my lovely co-host, Rob D, has written a fantastic book, The Price of Money, which, again, builds on that knowledge and takes it even a step further. To operate in this world successfully, from a finance point of view, understanding at least the basics of how our economy works is really, really important. But I promise you, as soon as you start to dig in and get a little bit of knowledge, you will be fascinated and want to learn more. So carry on listening to the podcast. If you're not subscribed, then make sure you do. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and get a copy of Rob's book and you will move several steps forward. So that's plenty to help you win in property this year. If you want some help along the way, we've got two services that might be interesting for you. The first is that we have a service called Property Hub Invest. It helps investors to build great buy-to-let portfolios using the same strategy that we pursue ourselves and do so at a discount. Find out how we do that and how you can find out more at propertyhub.net slash invest. And we've also got an app called Portfolio that allows you to access the potential benefits of property investment with as little as £1,000. To find out more about that one, go to portfolio.co.uk. But whether you work with us or go it alone, you should now have everything you need to make this your best year in property yet. And do make sure if you're not already, you're subscribed to the Property Podcast, because every Thursday, we're here to guide you through everything that's going on in the world and sign up for our free newsletter at propertyhub.net slash news, which is another way to share our opinions and keep you up to date with everything you need to know. Thanks for joining us. Now, go smash those goals of yours. Bye bye. (laughs) 